Okay, welcome to this episode of uh, SAPTEC Talks. Uh, this is number two of the episodes we, uh, we have. And today we have a great, or two great news. Uh, first one is we have a brand new department in SAPTEC and they already have great news for us. What can you tell? What is the news? The news is uh, the uh, sustainability... The sustainability department, yes, we started in September. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the things that we've done is to join the Responsible Business Alliance, mm -hmm. or SUPTEC has now joined the Responsible Business yep, Alliance. Yeah. Yeah. Not just the department. Not just the department. Mm, nice. We're all part of the Responsible yeah. Business Alliance. Good, good. Yeah. And uh, sustainability is important for SUPTEC, and it has been, but now we're getting serious. And, and joining this, uh, what did you say, alliance? Yeah, it's an industry coalition. Yeah. So it is a uh, tech, the tech industry, industry coalition for responsible supply chains. So by joining, we share a code of conduct with uh, all the other members. Mm -hmm. And you have members such as Apple and, Apple and Ford and Tesla. So there's quite a few companies working together. Mm -hmm. uh, and they all commit to the same principles within sustainability, mm. and they're all working together to drive that through down the supply chains. Yeah. So the, the idea is that we share a lot of suppliers. Yeah. Uh, so we have actually found 57 suppliers on the system already. Okay. Um, How many do we have? I, I don't know yet, ah. no. But uh, I think, so. I, I'm hoping that we, we, we will work this out with supply chain, but yeah. it's a gradual, uh, great uncovering, right? Yeah. You start with your tier one and your tier twos, yeah. uh, and you start to connect this. A big job. It's a bit like Facebook, you know? Yeah. I find my supplier, I send you a friend request, yeah. I can see your sustainability data. Yeah. I can use it for risk assessment. Yeah. I can use it to see what type of problems we might have or challenges that we might have. Mm -hmm. And then we are working together as an industry to solve those collectively. Yeah. In my mind, um, not now, but maybe in the past, and maybe some of the uh, listeners and viewers are thinking the same, that sustainability is just about the environment and mm. greenhouse emissions or, or stuff like that. But sustainability is more, more than it the is. environment. Yeah, it's a, lot. it's a lot more, actually. And um, sometimes it can be different, difficult to scope it properly mm -hmm. because there are so many issues under this umbrella and they're all connected to each other. But mm -hmm. human rights, mm -hmm. uh, the responsibility to make sure that the minerals in our charges aren't produced by children, mm -hmm. uh, that they are coming in, being produced in responsible conditions throughout the whole value chain. Mm -hmm. That's also part of the social sustainability mm -hmm. um, aspect. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. also very, very important. So. Yeah. Uh, it can be things like that, it can be anti-corruption, it can make, be making sure that people's rights aren't bought and sold under the table to make space for new uh, business deals or mining mm. um, undertakings or all sorts. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of interlinked issues and people very often think that sustainability is about climate change. Mm. Uh, but it's also about, even in the environmental space, it's also about biodiversity, it's also about chemicals, it is also making sure that we, to put it really bluntly, it's to make sure that we as a business mm -hmm. can operate forever and ever and ever and ever because we are not ex depleting the planet from its natural resources. Mm -hmm. So we are not taking more than we could give back. Mm -hmm. So. But you also had, uh, um, how, ca how, how can a company be sustainable, like 100% sustainable? And that's not possible as long as you, um, mm, what did you say, make a product? Or uh, as long as you make something, you cannot be sustainable? Well, I think as long as you create a physical product, it's mm. very difficult to be sustainable because mm. you will rely on energy uh, and energy might or might not be renewable. Mm. You rely on materials mm -hmm. that might or might not might or might not be renewable, and that might uh, involve raw materials that are hard to process, mm -hmm. uh, long and complicated, and lack of transparent supply chains from one end of the value chain to the next. It will generate waste. It will generate packaging. It will retransport. Mm -hmm. All of these things have their own um, footprint. Mm -hmm. um, so, as a starting point. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that a product is sustainable. No. 
There are lots of things happening though. Like people are starting to make plastic out of CO2. Mm -hmm. They're starting to harvest CO2 into cement. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make a carbon negative products. So there's a lot of innovation happening, which mm -hmm. is very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can still work continuously to reduce your human rights risk, reduce your climate footprint, um, reduce your impact on the, on the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And you can try to go past the boundary of what we call sustainable business and go into a regenerative space where you are actually contributing back mm. so that the solutions that we use mm. are generating um, more benefits mm. um, in, in, society, in society so that we become a force for good, if you like, because yeah. through our existen existence, um, we are actually part of the solution to solve things. And I think that's how you need to think a little bit when we think about sustainability as well. It's like, what positive impact is, do our presence cause? What is our potential to contribute to solving the climate crisis, the nature crisis? Uh, what opportunities have we got to mm -hmm. produce this in such a way that we are not close to um, risking human rights abuses in our value chain? So there's, mm -hmm. there's this part of innovation as well. Mm -hmm. Because I mentioned that this is like a, we have a great news from you being mm. part of, I forgot the name again. The Responsible Business Alliance, mm -hmm. or I RBA. Yeah, RBA. Yeah. Um, that's, that's just the, the news of our membership, mm. but it doesn't say that now we're done with that work. No, it doesn't. It's just the beginning of... It's the, the beginning. Work. It's going to help us gain more transparency mm -hmm. uh, and traceability, which is great because uh, in electronics, there's a really long way from consumer to mine. And, you know, we use uh, minerals that come from mines. They're being smelted into metals. It's being transported into components. It's a very, very long and complicated value chain in mm -hmm. electronics. And by being part of the RBA, we are working with the rest of the industry to get more transparency and to get more traceability. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that the more you know, the more targetedly you can work with the issues that you face. Yeah. And when we share the approach with others in the tech industry as well, Going it means- Going on the same supplier? Yeah, it's the example. same, yeah. So, so if you're my supplier and you've mm -hmm. had an audit, mm -hmm. you can share it with all your customers in the system, okay. rather than all of us auditing you separately. Mm -hmm. Which means that you can spend more, more of your time fixing whatever you need to fix, mm -hmm. rather than reporting to 15 different people. Yeah. So it's supposed to make it easier for the supplier. Mm -hmm. And also it, it, there's a certain level of trust required. So I need to trust the other RBA members that uh, when they have commissioned an audit or mm. uh, verified this data or d this collaboration is in place, that we are all actually st b building this on the same principles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it difficult to be a member of IRA? RBA? RBA. RBA. Um, no, you need to be in the tech industry, so yeah. you need to be uh, an electronics company. Yeah. Uh, and then there are different types of membership categories. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have gone for the regular member, mm -hmm. um, but you can also be an associated or an affiliate member, in which case you don't make the whole level of commitment, but you will use it to report and share information with others. Mm -hmm. So we have committed to follow the... We, yeah, so we have committed to, we have actually committed to following the uh, Responsible Business Alliance Code of Conduct, mm -hmm. and that specializes, for example, that we have a zero tolerance for child labor, mm -hmm. and that we have a zero tolerance for forced labor, uh, that we will encourage our supply. Two very important uh, They are very, things, yeah. yeah, they are. And, and I think people forget that these things happen, right? Because mm -hmm. we're a Norwegian company, we're sitting in Norway, there is no child labor here. As we know of. As we know, of in Norway, in general, there's very little child labor in Norway. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but I, I would say when we start to look at what our products are made of, mm. then that level of security or, or, or certainty will, will go down. Mm. So uh, we know that there are conflict, there are, there are four minerals that we call conflict minerals. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're used in almost all the um, technology we need for the green transition. Yeah. So, so it's important so, for every every part of the green transaction to, to follow this example. It is, and it's also important because of the changing rules and regulations. So if the whole moral compass and value-driven argument isn't sufficient, you mm. also have the regulatory environment catching up. Mm -hmm. So we have the conflict mineral regulation. The European Union is working on a uh, new law, actually, which means that if there is found forced labor in your product, it can be banned mm -hmm. from the market. Yeah. in all of Europe. 
Uh, and then you need to have the mechanisms in place mm. um, to make sure that um, you can document yeah. that this is not the case, that, yeah. th that you have checked, you, that you have done your due diligence. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. So not only just the European Union, but also it's my impression that our customers is more and more asking for mm. uh, evidence of, uh, of these things. Mm. And that's a good thing. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. Yes. So it's getting more on the agenda to through the value chain, mm. not just from us, but our customers and our customers' customers, maybe. Yeah. So the focus of um, of getting a a more sustainable uh, world is kind of getting more and more focus. Mm. If uh, I am your supplier, mm. so you do an audit with me. I have kids working for me. You figure that out. What will what will happen? Is there any consequence other than mm. you leaving me? Kind of. So I I, uh, I personally believe that when you discover something like that, mm -hmm. you shouldn't just leave. I think the first thing you should do is to try to fix the problem. And that's why companies need to have a human rights policy. And their policy needs to say, if I discover these things, these are the mechanisms I will work with. Mm -hmm. And there's actually something called a duty of remediation, mm -hmm. which means that we need to find a way of helping those kids. Mm -hmm. And we need to find a way of educating you so you stop employing them in your factory, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to find a way mm -hmm. of fixing the problem. And I think that needs to be the first point of call mm -hmm. before just leaving. Because mm -hmm. that would be the responsible thing to do. It's mm -hmm. like, I have discovered this mess. Mm -hmm. It's in my supply chain, it's in my product. I need to fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can draw on others in the, in the value chain and it can, can be a collaborative effort to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, but RBA also have a whistleblowing channel. Mm -hmm. And that works a little bit differently. So that means that if there is someone in our value chain where there are children or un unacceptable conditions, they can anonymously let the RBA know. And the RBA has a full team that is dedicated to handling this type of um, contacts. Mm -hmm. So they have a team that will, that, that will be mobilized mm -hmm. uh, so that this problem can be fixed. Yeah. Nice. Sounds very good with the um, whistleblower function and and that this is, uh, as you say, you shouldn't just leave, you have to do what you can to to make it stop so mm. kids doesn't work or there is uh, mm, people working there which, who doesn't uh, have a good working conditions. So yeah, because nice there, there, there has been so many stories from other industries uh, several years ago and so uh, as well, where people have discovered issues and problems mm -hmm. and their reaction has been to just cut contact. Mm -hmm. But then the problem is not being fixed. No, because and they the get working, new customers. Yeah, and the working conditions aren't necessarily being fixed and you don't know that what you discovered is actually being solved. No. So, so I, I really think that the responsible thing is to try to fix the problem. Mm. Yeah. And um, I forgot your suggestion to change to yeah. greenwashing. Yeah, because uh, RBA, that's mm. very much of what's happening behind the label. So yeah. that is about the working conditions that mm. goes from before, bef basically it, it will address the manufacturing, the assembly, um, the smelteries. So it's everything that's happening before the charger becomes a charger. Mm -hmm. And after the charger becomes a charger, it's being sold. Mm -hmm. And then you have another sphere of sustainability, which is how do we communicate that? Mm -hmm. How do we, what do we say about our products and how true is what we say about our product? Yeah, yeah. true. So uh, greenwashing can be to say that our product is more sustainable than it is after it's done manufactured. Yeah, so greenwashing could be like any claim that our products are green, clean, sustainable, that we can't back up. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, think, I think there's a lot of accidental greenwashing happening in the world. I think it's happening a lot because, you know, I've done something good. Mm -hmm. um, this summer I was in Poland and I was offered climate positive water. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found that very fascinating. So I had to ask the waitress, what does that mean, right? What, mm -hmm. what, what makes, if I drink this water, mm -hmm. as opposed to this water, mm -hmm. how does this heal the planet, 
right? If I drink this water, how is that the healing process for the planet? Mm -hmm. uh, I was felt a little bit mean, but I, I, I couldn't stop myself from I asking this question. I guess you didn't question. get the answer. She said they hadn't served the water in plastic. It was in a glass bottle and not a plastic bottle. That was the change. That was the change. And, you know, if, if from a greenwashing or marketing or sustainability perspective, mm -hmm. you can say that you have less plastic pollution because I have my, my water in a glass bottle. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you have water in a glass bottle, mm. does, does, yeah, it does, it, the fact that you're tapping it into to glass instead of water, it's not enough to say that uh, this is now a positive effect for the planet if you drink it. Because you it's use just, energy to get the water into the bottle. And the water, Unless you go out and... and I, I'm thinking, like, in best case, drinking water is neutral, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It doesn't give anything back. No. Mm. So that, that, that's like an example of, I would say, accidental greenwashing, because mm. th this is what she'd been told, right? This is yeah. climate-positive water. Mm -hmm. And then because, you know, both me and the person I travelled with, we work with sustainability, we, we, we just couldn't not ask what that meant. So your department now will make sure that Saftec isn't doing any greenwashing? So I'm hoping our communication people and marketing people will yeah. be in the first of line to mm -hmm. make sure we don't greenwash, but we will be more than happy to help. Yeah. yeah. Sounds Absolutely. Good. But because it's, it's actually uh, for the first time now, p companies are seeing real consequences of greenwashing. Yeah. There's a greenwashing directive being implemented. Um, European Union? Yeah. And in uh, Denmark a few years ago, uh, for the very first time, uh, a, co a company was fined in millions mm -hmm. for greenwashing because they, uh -huh. they claimed to be sustainable and they couldn't back it up. They didn't have any life cycle assessment data or any data points to verify that that's the case. Mm -hmm. So um, it's becoming it's becoming more and more scrutiny mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. sustainability communication and people are expecting companies that they're holding us to a higher higher standard than they used to. Yeah. So if we say we are green, we need to know why we're green. If we yeah. say we're clean tech, we need to know why we're clean tech. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. And as I mentioned, mm -hmm. great news for uh, Subtech with the new department. Uh, membership in IB... RBA. RBA. Yeah. <laughs> Very difficult to remember, but now we have mentioned it more than once, so maybe more than me can learn this mm. and search it up and see what it is. And thank you for joining today. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for uh, listening in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>